How many of y'all know we're in the last days? Amen. This is not a, a religious operation. It's about a military operation. Amen? Amen. You're here not because of a Bible study. You're here because of a training session. Amen. Religion's got to go. Amen. Amen? Everyone say religion's bye-bye. Jesus never came to bring religion. He came to bring a kingdom. Amen. Amen? And he is not only the Lord of hosts, which means Lord of the army. So it's a military operation. Amen. In fact, when you were conceived, you forgot where you came from. Amen. All of us were probably home when the Lord said, who will go for me? We all went, I will. Amen. And then we came to the earth. We all lost it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and the devil came and fed us all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but then we had to get born again. Amen. So you must be born again in the spirit. It will come out of the carnal. To come out of the what? The carnal. So we are no longer carnal lights. We are eternal lights. Amen? So we're no longer Obama nights. We're eternal lights. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's go there for a second, please. Hallelujah. <clears throat> You know, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. Amen. Amen. And, and there is such great deception and delusion, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's just phenomenal. It's overwhelming Amen. to how people are easily deceived. And, and, and I, and I got to tell you that the reason for that is because they're not willing to expose their influence. Amen. You know, we talk about making unseen seen and so forth. And, and, and the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you to label, label it tonight. So tonight's teaching is exposing your influence, okay? Thank you. <laughs> exposing your influence. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. Through his spirit. It's amazing how many people have no relationship with the spirit of God. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. And he is called Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why he's called Holy he is the spirit of the living God. Now, in verse 11, are you ready? For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So if you're not walking in the spirit and have a relationship in the spirit, are you going to know the things of God? No, you're, only, you're going to only do surface level of what you read about, and you'll read it like a book instead of God's true word. It's different. This is life. This is a manual. Amen? Amen? In verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So if you don't know what the Holy Spirit is saying, you don't know the truth of the things of God, how are you going to be able to compare it? Amen. You can't. And that's why people go astray. That's why people think that they're good. And I'm okay if I'm good. No, you're dangerous if you're good. There's two fruits you produce. Amen? Actually, three, peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit, which is God's love. But then there's another arena where there is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Did you ever notice that? Good. Why? Because there's a tendency that not all good is God. In fact, most of the good is followed by evil. It hides behind good. Does everybody understand that? Oh, snap. Now, are you ready? Verse 14. It says, but the natural man does not receive the things that the Spirit of God does. Everybody grab hold of that. So one of the things that the influence of the enemy is going to try to do is keep you in the natural state of being. Amen. He's going to try to keep you thinking carnally. You'll live according to your culture, your inheritance, influence of things, influence of media. 
Not knowing it, what you approve of, you'll be judged by. The word says that we're to judge by fruit of individuals. So would God approve abortion? Would God approve same-sex marriage? Will God approve of the same bathroom? Everybody can share shit. <laughs> Will God approve of a man dressing like a woman? Then why do people vote for people that approve it? Because they're deceived. They're not exposing what they're being influenced. And I'm not talking politically. Does everybody understand that? You look at whoever God wants to put in office, but it's our responsibility to put in office those God has chosen, not what man has chosen. Because there's a difference between a Luciferian agenda and a kingdom agenda. Luciferian agenda and kingdom agenda. I, I thought I said agenda. I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. It says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him. They're foolish. They can't comprehend it. They don't understand. Amen? Because they're only thinking physically. They're only thinking what they see. They, in fact, their sight is only so far. But there's an arena where we are to see through the physical into the spirit so we know what we're being influenced by. People don't even, some people don't even believe in demons and they go to church every Sunday. And they're loaded with them. Because they don't, they think, oh, I'm a Christian. I can't have a demon. What do you mean? You could be the most carrier one. The demons are no respecter of a person. Amen? What do you think Jesus hung around with, man? Some of them were sinners, but most of them that were following him, they followed him, right? And then what did he do? They accepted him. They became Christians. And what did he do? He cast devils out of them. In fact, that's what our commission is. The first thing it says is, those in my name, those who follow me in my name, you will cast out devils. That's a true Christian. It's our responsibility to Force out darkness to bring in light. But people are caught up in religion because they're good. I'm a good person. I pay tithe. I go to church. But nobody knows what I do behind closed doors. Not even God. See, because there's no relationship, is there? Again, what you approve of, that God disapproves of, we are judged by. That's why the blood will be on our hands. So it's our responsibility to make with what is unseen seen or it's our responsibility to expose our influences. Paul called it powerfully. He said, we are hard-pressed on every side. We're hard-pressed. Man, we are being influenced by media, music. You know how many Christians are still listening to music that brings demons in them and don't even understand it? And they wonder why. But the natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Everybody got it? But they are spiritually what? Discerned. Spiritually discerned. Wow. So that's why it's important to have fellowship with the Spirit of God. This is not, look at, it's amazing how many people, I was watching some of the news today and all of these people are talking about what association of organization or religiosity they belong to. They didn't say they were Christians. Yes, I'm a, a Presbyterian, or I'm a this, and I'm a that. And so what the heck? Is anybody going to tell me anybody you're a Christian? Presbyterians don't get into heaven. Christians do. Does everybody understand that? It's gotten a, your organization ain't going to heaven. That was all, does everybody get that? That's gone. This is not about denomination or demonization. Same thing. Jesus never started. I ever told you about the time when Jesus said, look at him. I told five, he told 500 individuals. 500 disciples said, look at, this is a, I want you to get this, and I command you to do this. I'm going to take off here shortly, and in 10 days, I want you to go to the upper room and wait for me, and I'm going to send you my spirit. I command you to do the Acts 1. You read it. It's a command from God Almighty. Out of the 500 people, 180 showed up. The rest started denominations. 180 showed up. 180 obeyed. The rest of them didn't. And they never got filled and powered by the Holy Spirit. 
Only through the power of the Holy Spirit can you and I overcome this world. Amen? You can't do it in your own strength. The power must be of God and not us. And everything. Is everybody okay? Um, let's go to Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4. Exposing your influence. In other words, by exposing your influence, you must go to the root of what it is. So you go to the root of the music. You go to the root of the movie. You go to the root of associations. You go. In other words, what is the source of them? What's the source? See, Jesus must be your source. Everything else is a resource. Amen? So you want to find out what the source is behind everything. Why? Because you know whether you're being influenced by either of God or of darkness. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, what does it say? Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some, some will depart from what? The faith. Giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And they won't even know it. They won't even know it. You know why? Because they never took the opportunity to expose what they're being influenced by. We got a teaching called, Who Told You That? Amen. Amen. Who told you that? And where did you come from? You know, environment, tradition, cultures, family. How many know family can influence you? Amen. Come on, you need, to, you need to grow up and be somebody. You need to get a college, you need to do this, you need to do that. I want to be somebody. How about you already are somebody? You already are somebody. That's why God sent you here, because you're somebody. <laughs> In 1 John chapter 1. Well, last Tuesday was like a Friday night. Amen. Yes. Slam dunk and Holy Ghost. First John chapter one and verse five. Would you speak it with me, please? And this is a message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So there's no gray area, is there? Amen. Who owns the gray area? Satan's kingdom. Amen. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not practice the what? Truth. Isn't that amazing? In fact, the word believe means to follow. So if you say you're a believer but don't follow, God says you lie. Has everybody got that? This is reality. This is where the veils and the uh, scales need to come off so we can see all the way through. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus Christ. His son cleanses us from all sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we what? Confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Righteousness is influenced by Christ. Does everybody agree with that? So unrighteousness is influenced by the devil, powers of darkness. Amen. So you and I want to be backed by the source of Christ. The fruit would be righteousness. Does everybody get this? The fruit would be what? Righteousness. Again, not all good because there's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil and there's a tree of life which produces righteousness. The other one produces good and evil. That's why many people think, well, I don't need Jesus. I'm good. I don't need to follow. I'm good. I accepted Jesus 40 years ago and even though I'm acting like a heathen, I'm okay. Oh, no, you're not because who you serve when you die is where you go. Let nobody deceive you on that. That's not true doctrine. Any other than that. So it says that 
Not all good is backed by Christ. Amen? Because some of it is backed by evil. It has a form of godliness, but is actually what? Evil. In 1 John chapter 3. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is not lawless, it's lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested, Christ was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. But whoever abides, everyone say abide. abide. So that means there must be a relationship. Amen. David said something powerful. He said, the Lord is always before me. I love that. David was a true example. Did he make mistakes? Oh, you bet. But when he, after he made the mistake, he ran back to the presence of God and stood before the Ark of the Covenant. He was a man after God's heart. Now, you got to remember, with David, the Spirit of the Lord had to come upon them. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord had to come upon them. The Spirit of the Lord was not living in them like you and I when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord came upon them. It talks about when they gathered together and they were in the mountains and said the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. The prophecy came upon them. The Spirit would come upon them. But for me and you in the new covenant, the Spirit of God can live in us. It's different. Oh, Hallelujah. And verse 6, and whoever abides in him does not sin. In other words, he does not let sin have dominion over him. When you blow it, you repent quickly. You don't justify and reason because there's close relationship. And it's not just about sinning anymore, remember? It's about pleasing him. If you're looking just, oh my gosh, I don't want to sin. How about just pleasing him? That's relationship. If you know, you have a desire that in your walk with the Lord, you want to please him. That's building relationship. You don't fear because of sinning. You're going to make a mistake, amen? You're going to say something you didn't really want to say, and you're going to, you know. But there's a difference between breaking covenant and not breaking covenant. Whoever abides in him does not sin, and whoever sins has neither seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices what? Righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And he who sins is of the? devil for the devil has sinned from the beginning in other words this is the influence for this purpose the son of god was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil that word might means that you must cooperate with him to continue putting down the enemy is everybody okay verse 9 whoever has been born of god does not sin he doesn't let sin remain it's called a born of state of being it's called the second chamber of the tabernacle i'm not going to get into all that thing for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor is he who does not love his brother. Has everybody got it? Practice, produce, manifest. It's called fruits, or what people might call works. It's an area of conduct or character of Christ. It's called a divine nature being expressed through me and you. Why? Because of your relationship with the Lord. And whatever you sow, you do what? You reap. Amen. So what is the source of your influence in everything we do? How about the decision you're getting ready to make? See, one of the things the enemy wants you to do is make a decision so you sow to the flesh, then he has access to you because but it's, a, it's a law. It is a spiritual law. No matter whether you're a believer or not a believer, it's to the whole world. Every human being is under that law. It's called sowing and reaping. Nobody escapes it. Matthew 6. Matthew 6. Is everybody there? Matthew 6, verse 22. Let's speak it together. It says, the lamp of the body is the what? Is the what? Eye. The eye. It's an eye gate. We have gates. Ear gate, eye gates, mouth gate. The word says that a man defiles himself by what he speaks. 
It says, don't touch anything unclean and I'll be your father. You can touch things unclean with your thoughts and agreements. You can touch things unclean physically. The lamp of the body is the eye. If, any, if, if therefore your eye is good, your body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve what? Two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? In other words, we can't serve two masters. You cannot serve the Lord and the devil. Amen? If you serve in the Lord and the devil, the devil will get you at the end. I'm going to tell you again. If you're serving the Lord and the devil, the devil will get you at the end. You cannot serve two masters because a house divided will not stand. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, First Corinthians chapter 6. You know, we are at such a critical time right now in our country and globally. It's a critical time. Very critical. This country is about to get lost. But God is praying. You know how that storm was heading our way? That hurricane? It was the prayers of the saints that pushed that hurricane off. And it's the prayers of the saints right now that is trying to put in God's servant, not Lucifer's servant. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. Would you read it with me, please? All things are lawful for me, but not all things are what? Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the what? Power of any or the power of influence. Does everybody get it? We will not be brought under the power of any influence. <laughs> Vitally important. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Wow. See, when you gave your life to Christ, you're not, you don't have a life. The life you fight for now is his life, in yours. You're no longer fighting for your life anymore. Your life is surrendered. There's been an exchange made. Amen? Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verse 67. Are you ready for this? What does it say? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Say it again. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Does everybody get that? Before I was afflicted. In other words, I went astray. That's what brought the affliction on me. 
Amen? Does everybody understand that? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your what? Your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as a grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than a thousands of coins of gold and silver. So there's something powerful. He said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Why? If he would have exposed his influence, would he have gone astray? No. See, we bring on the stuff ourselves. We got to stop blaming the devil. Oh, the devil made, it, made me do it. No, you didn't expose the influence. And if we'll start exposing more of the influence in all areas, whether it's peer pressure, whether it's family pressure, will we stop becoming men pleasers and start becoming God pleasers? So we expose what's the influence. What's influencing me? What's influencing me to make this decision? What's influencing me? Whether it be in business, no matter what it is, let me tell you, the enemy wants to change every decision. He wants to influence you to do something wrong in your business, in your ministry, in, in your marriage, everything. He's involved in everything. I, went, I became afflicted. Why? Because I went astray. And why did I go astray? Because I did not expose the influence. In Psalm 107. Verse 17. Oh, glory. Psalm 107 and verse 17. Let's speak it. He says, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities were what? Afflicted. Afflicted. Why? Did they bring it on themselves? Everything is brought on ourselves. Does everybody get it? Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their what? Distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for, he is, for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. In other words, they brought the afflictions on themselves because they went astray, not exposing the influences. In Psalm 34. Let's speak it. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord, who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. In other words, stop being a liar. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and he delivers them out of all of their what? All of their, all of their what? Troubles. Troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, humble, and says, save such as I have a contrite spirit. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all. Man, he knows we're boneheads sometimes. He knows. He says, man, I know you're going to bring afflictions on yourself. Why? Because you're going to forget to expose what the influence is, and you're going to get afflicted. But if you'll call on me, I'm going to deliver you. And when I deliver you, I'm going to give you, putting you in a place to learn. Amen? Amen. Why? Because he's going to use it for training. Verse 20 says, he guards all his bones. None of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. See, by exposing your influence, you're able to see all the way through the natural. Amen? 
That's one of the things God, remember, Jesus said, I've come to bring sight to the blind. He didn't mean physically blind. He meant spiritually blind. Not that he didn't heal the blind that were physically blind. Amen. There's too many, too many in the kingdom that can't see all the way through. In verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Therefore, since we have this ministry, we have received mercy. We do not lose heart. But we have what? Renounced the hidden things of shame. In other words, you've exposed them. Not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, the gospel means message of truth, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Perishing. They are dying. Why? Because they're going astray. It's going to catch up. Whose mind's the God of this age? Who's the God of this age? Satan. Satan. The God of this age has blinded who do not believe or follow, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the Lord who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this earthen treasure, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence may be of what? Of the power of God and not of us, because we are what? Hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body of the dying, the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Wow. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. In verse 18. Let's speak it together, please. Little children, it is the last hour, as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming, even many Antichrists, in other words, false teachers, false prophets, people proclaiming to be Christians that are not, have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. It said that they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know what? You know all things by the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, carried by the Holy Spirit. So they were made manifest. Why? Because they did not expose what was influencing them. It took them right out through the spirit of Antichrist. Took them out. They became religious. They started following false doctrines. Amen? They did not check. They did not... Look to her influence. Look at every thought. Everyone say every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. Every presence releases an imagination and an emotion. So we must discern what these voices are. What is this influence? If I'm not willing to take and go look further, then I'm going to always go in that cycle. That cycle of deception. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception. He puts people in fear. You know how many people walk around in fear all the time? Fear of death, fear of this, fear of failure, fear of whatever. Fear. That's not God. How many of all know anxiousness is fear? Amen. The word says, be anxious for nothing, but in all prayer and supplication. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. Glory. In verse 11. Ephesians 5, verse 11. Let's speak it, please. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose, expose, expose your influence. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. 
for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. See, they have fallen to sleep. Why? Because they're not causing or looking or exposing what's influencing them. They're being moved by emotional decisions. People that are emotionally make decisions always by emotional are the most dangerous people to be around. Emotional decision makers. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Awake you who are dull of hearted. Awake you who are dull of the spirit. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See, then you walk circumspectly, but not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And then it says, and do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the what? Holy Spirit. Hello? Be filled with the what? Spirit. That's why we have anointing services and worship services. We're to expose the source of influence. And we're, let me, you want to avoid afflictions? Expose the source of influences. In Matthew 12. Matthew 12, 22. Then one was brought to Jesus, who was demon-possessed, blind and mute. And the Lord healed him, so that the blind man and, and, mute, and blind and mute man both spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now when the Pharisees heard of it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. But Jesus knew their what? Jesus knew their what? Jesus knew their thoughts. Do you know that you can know people's thoughts? I'm not saying you're going around reading people's minds, but you can know a person's thought. You know what they're thinking. In the spirit, you know what people are thinking. Hey, if demons know what can read your mind, amen, and the spirit knows what's what, he knows what people's thinking. Now, he's gonna, not going to reveal everyone's thought to you just to go around and walk around wondering what they're thinking. I wonder what they're thinking. No. But there's an area where God will reveal a person's thought to you. You will know. Is everybody okay? So Jesus was exposing what was influencing them, wasn't he? Because he knew their thoughts. He knew what was exposing. He knows what was influencing them. He knew the source of their influence. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then does his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. He knew their thoughts. In the, in the spirit, Jesus exposed the influence. He understood. Amen? And Deuteronomy chapter 18. Remember, the enemy promotes deception. He promotes lies. He promotes justification. He, look, at, look at all the influence through media, music, movies, websites, books, education. All of these things that are influencing individuals. Did you ever wonder where the author was or where the book you're reading? From? How about the music you're listening to? What are they? Do you know that in the industry, the music industry, in the secular world, all music is, there's place to curse on it. so that people invoke themselves and bring spirits into them. They're left in a cauldron where 13 witches pray over the music for so many days. And they conjure up, they call up the demons, and it causes the influence. How many of y'all know music really influences you? Amen? You'd be walking in a store, you hear music, and all of a sudden, oh, I remember that. It brings you back to the past, Amen? Sometimes not the good past. 
You know, the devil never reminds you of the bad past. <laughs> he reminds you of the good past. <laughs> and Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A few more, a couple more scriptures and you can go home and make popcorn. <laughs> Praise God. Some of y'all are starting to drool already. What do you mean? <laughs> Listen, this is vital. This is important. We need to have this to get through. Amen. Let's stop being becoming welcome mats for Satan's kingdom and become a welcome, a welcome mat for the kingdom of God. In verse 9, let's speak it. And Jesus said, When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. You know, every one of us came from another nation. Amen? We came into this country. Our, some of us were born here, but our families, our forefathers brought. Amen? They brought their own cultures and so forth. And he said, don't, don't learn the cultures that are abominable. He said, in verse 10, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. That is now called abortion. Nor one who practices witchcraft. How many of y'all know when you use drugs and alcohol, you're practicing witchcraft? How many of y'all know when you're using dip and smoking cigarettes, you're practicing witchcraft? Because they're accursed items or soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. How many of y'all know people praying to the dead brings a curse? Some people are still talking to Aunt Lucy and Uncle Chuck, or Grandma Bethel, and they don't hear a word. Those are familiar spirits that are speaking to people. And they bring a curse on themselves. They're, all, they're gone. They're over there with the Lord. Believe me, they are not talking to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abortions, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be what? Blameless, Blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispose, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. Why? Because we don't need to read horoscopes. That brings a curse. People go out there and read, open up these fortune cookies and go, oh, yes. You just opened yourself up. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, not even realize it, that they're touching unclean things. Listen, the enemy, the enemy comes in multiple ways of deception. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's speak it together. Love what? Never fails. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Now, we know that that's not come yet, has it? Not everything's going to vanish. He's talking about these are going to vanish away when Christ comes. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, who is Jesus, then that which is in part will be done away with. Everyone speak with me. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away what? childish things for now we see in a mirror dimly but then face to face now I know in part but then I shall know just as I am known and now abide faith hope love these three but the greatest of these is what love abide in love which is what is love it's God's peace joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit that is called love how many of y'all know love is a choice amen, amen? Love is a choice. People are always looking for love as a feeling. It is an emotion. But how many of you know lust is also an emotion? Amen. Amen. And I want to close with Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2.
first four verses, I think. God willing, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Verse 1. Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Can you imagine if everyone was like-minded, how much we'd be able to succeed? They wouldn't need welfare lines. Amen? They wouldn't need a lot of clinics. People would be getting healed. There wouldn't be any more homeless shelters. Man, there'd be so much if we were all like-minded. He said, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. There wouldn't be any more wars. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions. How many of y'all know that the enemy wants to influence to become selfish? Or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of a man. Very powerful. It is vitally important these days because these days are evil, they are wicked, and there is great deception. More demonic activity is being released, but God is releasing more of his presence to overcome. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But he's releasing more wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that we can combat the enemy, so that we can see. And you're not going to overcome unless you begin to start to Expose your influences. What's influencing me? Amen? What's in, and what is the source of that influence? So we can come out of deception and become like-minded. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this word, let the seed that's been imparted in us be protected by the blood of Jesus. Let the anointing break every yoke of bondage that would try to steal this seed in this word. Let this seed penetrate through our whole being that we become like-minded, like-willed, like-hearted, and like-purpose for your glory. Lord, I pray blessing over each and every one. I ask that your face shine upon them, your countenance uplift them, that the peace, your peace, will guide their hearts and their minds, and that you would visit them in dreams, visions, and that you would open your word to them, filling them with your spirit, and opening the doors that are you and shutting the doors that are not in their life, and bringing prosperity to each and every one, the riches of your glory and the power of your spirit in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>